Welcome, everyone. To, and thank you again, Miss Davis, for letting us into your beautiful home. I didn't know I had a choice. Told me that I had a contract to do these webisodes. All right, this is a new that My I. It's been around for agent. a while, but it's new to I me. What do you want to know? So we'll just cut to the chase here. Uh, concept: early Earth, Saturn, the solar system. What is the force at the heart of life? Uh, this is Cosmos in Collision. We've been through all that the last time you were here. Don't you I remember? I think our fans would love to know, who do you wear? Saul Greenberg, she's fabulous, love him. What is the engine that drives it forward? What do you eat? What do I eat? Artichokes. Morning, noon, and night. Remind me to tell you about the time I looked into the heart of an artichoke. That links all living About. things. Or better yet, we'll save it for some snowy night in front of the fire. Can I please have some tea? And what do you do in your spare time? Spare time? What's that? Claim Warm, not hot. The Sugar one drop remembered of epoch, The planet Saturn dominated the sky, close to the Earth. The smallest to the largest. That links families through generations. Oh, the Chinese way. And looks in personality. Thank you for letting us into your lovely home. Proposed in a work still unpublished at the time. I'm very selective about whom I invite into my personal space. So you should be very thankful. Ancient cultures the world over insisted that an exemplary Presiding son over the mythic golden age. Well, welcome to my home. Once ruled the sky. Oh, there's Bill and Hillary on the campaign trail with me. Or rather, me on the campaign trail with Bill and Hillary. Ruling from the center and summit of the sky. Or oh, Bill and Hill, as I, I'd like to say. I didn't spend too much time For with the her, Egyptians, but... this former power was the creator, Otto uh, Troy McLaughlin and Theodore Holden. It was an outrageous idea. And yet, I found in it the inspiration for a life's work. Bill and I in go ancient Mesopotamia, we see the primeval sun as a great turning wheel in the heavens. Good and times. the astronomers named this body as Good the times. planet Saturn. It was I from the Romans that we received the planet's name, Saturn. Called Kronos, was also named Helios, the sun. For those of you who don't know anything about anything. Shinoseri style. And even the alchemists preserve this preposterous identity. In health and in sickness. Scientists had searched for the answer for hundreds of years. Which is they called best. Saturn the best sun. Best sun, superior sun, exemplary sun. The core idea always pointed directly to the axis of the sky, the celestial pole around which the heavens visually turn. As improbable as it may seem. I asked for tea, and there's the Pope. He's really funny in person. We get along great. He talked about me. Is that you and Winston Churchill? If it looks like Winston Churchill, it's probably Winston Churchill. What of it? This is where and the this... Egyptians located their primeval sun god, Atum. This motionless spot in the heavens is precisely where later astronomical traditions from Greece to Persia and China all claimed that Saturn had ruled the world, a contradiction of every principle we take for granted today.
I asked for one sugar, one drop of cream, more not hot. I mean, can't you get it right? I've told you 10,000 times. It's freaking tea. Get me the scotch. Ancient chroniclers insisted that the planet Saturn, now just a speck in the sky, had presided over the Golden Age. An epoch of abundance, cosmic harmony, and grandeur. The archaic name of Italy was Saturnia, and tradition held that this very name was given to the original site of Rome. This has to be my most prized possession. Me, right there, and the Dalai Lama, right, right. Well, one of them's the Dalai Lama, and the other one's the busboy, I guess. Anyway, he gave me an incredible sense of serenity, inner peace, a, a zen, if you will. Before we talk about Baby Jane, you're up and related ancient festivals. You have a furry friend with you tonight. Ah, uh, yeah. In one form or another. Every culture that remembered Saturn's reign regarded the planet God as the father of kings, Actually, it's the one father of, my of the hobbies nation, or the taxidermy. Race. It's it's incredibly soothing to gut one of God's little creatures and expose it for for what it truly is. Much like symbolic content of our own New Year's and Christmas celebrations will trace this to the Roman Saturnalia. When Bill and I had the farm in Connecticut and Bill was flipping flapjacks and I quickly grabbed a skillet off of one of the other birds and bonk hit it on the head and there she is forever. Isn't that marvelous? The Sabbath, the special day of rest and reverence was Saturni Dies, Saturn's Day. A day honored throughout the Mediterranean, the Near East and beyond. Oh, it's really, really made me quite calm. Thank you. The popular Roman festival, Saturnalia, was a symbolic return to the Saturnia Regna, Saturn's reign, the Golden Age. And it's a wonderful reminder to people what happens when, when they sneak up on me. And it was said that the Israelites once saw themselves as Saturn's children. In the same way, the Greeks invoked Kronos and as their first father. The and the Romans the insisted that they were the true descendants of Saturn, just arriving in Italy love. through the adventures Looking of the legendary the ancestor so Aeneas. Silent. So still. And so stiff. It looks like we're in for a special treat. And yes, I'm going to be making a cake for you. My special chocolate cake. The same way I, I use the approach when I do pause on film. If you keep your focus, nothing can get in your way. Any kind of catastrophe, anything that, oops. <laughs> Silly goose that I am, I, I forgot the eggs. You see, my dear agent, Saul Greenberg, said I, I needed to be more pleasant when being interviewed. And sweeter was the word that he used. So I thought to myself, what could be more sweet? And then a chocolate cake. He said, I, I might be bitter about something. sweeter something. was the word that he used. I'm not bitter about anything. Just because Baby Jane's the first film I've made in years, I'm not bitter at all. And sweeter was the word that he used. As a matter of fact, I'm goddamn excited. I've been talking to a producer about remaking all of my films. Ancient traditions identified the Ugaritic and Hebrew L as Saturn. And many more, so you see, I'm not bitter at all. It's just because I have so many of you in my house that I'm, I'm a little testy. But there was a dark side to Saturn, reflecting the catastrophic end of the Golden Age. This was when, in the words of Manilius, Saturn, the first father, fell to the opposite oh, end of the world axis. Well, first of all, you always have to have some this sudden onset of chaos, when heaven itself to seemed to fall out of control, has haunted civilizations across the millennia, erupting as doomsday anxiety, the fear that what happened once will happen again. For those of you who don't know anything about anything, 
It's almost impossible to believe that ancient people sacrificed their own children, either symbolically or literally, to the planet god Saturn. Saturn was remembered as the devourer of his own children. It's such a pleasure to have his wife demanding sacrifice. And as El, or the Elohim, commanding Abraham to sacrifice his own son, Isaac. In the face of evidence that cannot be denied, the reasonable course is to bring the catastrophic source of these memories into the light of day. Now we're going to use two whole eggs. And I just hate it when they crack, so you have to be very, very gentle when you do it. And you just put them in like that. You see? Don't you hate it when they break? And you put the other one in just like that. And you two can make a cake. Now, I find... Purely enchanted by something Velikovsky proposed in a work still unpublished. My book, The Saturn Myth, published by Doubleday in 1980, began the reconstruction of a spectacular formation formerly seen in the sky, a gathering of planets looming immense above the ancient witnesses. I was working with the mythic archetypes, cultures everywhere using different words and different symbols to describe eerily similar events. It's always good to to take a minute, if you need to time yourself, I usually light a cigarette, and by the time I take just a, a couple of puffs, I think I, it, it, it's done. But the planetary model presented in the Saturn myth was far from complete. Messy. Amongst the greatest of enigmas was the cosmic wheel recorded by every ancient culture. Images of a wheel in the sky carved on stone are older than civilization itself. Many archaeologists see these wheels as an imagined vehicle of the sun rolling across the I sky. I see that you have a lovely collection of photographs with you and other celebrities. Could you talk about that? Well, those are some some recent photos and some old ones mixed But in, in its most common form, the cosmic wheel doesn't go anywhere. Often it rests on a stationary pillar, or atop a stairway, or ladder, or is turned by a rope while resting on an altar or table. And the spokes of the wheel are not functional as such. They are fluid and etheric. Well, I'm uh, afraid that uh, this is all the time we have today, Miss Davis, but good. I just want to really thank you for all your time, and I want everyone out there to look forward to Can't next wait. week's Moment with Betty. Would you please read the cue card? Gladly. Uh, tune in next week for more episodes of Moments with Betty. Happy? Now get out! Get out, all of you!